This week from Hollywood, we're taking you to the Hitchcock premiere with Helen Mirren, Jessica Biel, James Darcy, and Scarlett Johansson. Good afternoon. To the premiere of Anna Karenina with Kira Knightley, and to the post AMA parties that had Hollywood up in arms. AMAs! Then we get the inside scoop on the tense relations involving Halle Berry and her two real life leading men. Each white and witness as stars not only feed the homeless, but also travel for their supper in LA and New York. Then we shine the spotlight on funny gal Sarah Silverman. Oh, my hair, my face. All of these updates and more coming up. But first, let's take a look at the red carpet. Hitchcock starring Anthony Hopkins was all the rage in Hollywood as it made its star-studded premiere. Good afternoon. Helen Mirren was dressed to the nines in shimmering gold as she raved about Alfred Hitchcock and the legacy he left behind. You know, Hitchcock's movies are studied by every film student. He's homaged by, you know, most of the present day filmmakers always pay respect to his work and, and credit his influence upon their work. Um, what is very rarely spoken about is Alma's contribution to those films. Danny Houston said his character was a bit of a cad with the ladies, including one Helen Mirren. Uh, he's a bit of a hack. He admires Hitchcock, has a little bit of a romantic uh, moment uh, with Helen Mirren's character, Hitchcock's wife. Mrs. Timberlake, Jessica Biel, told us about her progressively modern character in the film. It was very, very interesting, the preparation, because it was so terrifying every step of the way. How do you become a person who's alive and who had an incredible career and had an amazing relationship with Mr. Hitchcock and, and really was a very uh, progressive and modern and independent woman um, in her own right. This book psycho is fiendishly entertaining. James Darcy racked his brain in preparation for Hitchcock and what it all would mean for the audience, as well as those who knew the real man very well. I had to sort of find the difference between Norman Bates and Anthony Perkins. That was that was the kind of important thing to do. You know, I, I felt like I knew who Anthony Perkins was, but uh, but of course I don't. I just know this one very iconic character. I've seen him in a, in a couple of other films, but honestly, this was the thing that he's been completely synonymous with forever. More anger! More! <laughs> married to a man obsessed by murder. With her hair swept to the side, a very gorgeous Scarlett Johansson told us that the infamous shower scene in Psycho took an actual seven days to film originally, but only one day for this film's depiction of the events. She was relieved not to be in the shower any longer when it was all said and done. You know, they had seven days to shoot that scene originally, so... It was, uh, you know, we did it in one, so it was a little bit stressful. I have to say I was happy to not be in the shower for seven days with the crew around. Oh, you imp, you've got nudity in there. Well, her breasts were rather large, but it was a challenge not to show them. The American Music Awards were hot on their own, but the party continued in Hollywood well beyond the end of the telecast. Oh, the MAs. The Wanted's Tom Parker, Siva Kness were on, Jay McGinnis, and Max George partied at Lush and Bootsy Bellows in West Hollywood. Cy and MC Hammer went their separate ways off stage as they were wined and dined at Medeo and Bootsy Bellows. Usher smiled ear to ear following his night out post awards. <laughs> Former VJ turned superstar Jenny McCarthy hid behind her purse upon entering Greystone Manor Supper Club. The pompadour clad comedian was relaxed but vocal that she wasn't a fan of the establishment. Kira Knightley wowed the crowd at the Anna Karenina premiere at Arclight Cinemas in Hollywood. The premiere was canceled in New York following Superstorm Sandy. Kira was accompanied by actress Alicia Vikander. I love you. Why? Can't ask why about love. Did you start the fight? Olivier, did you start the fight? Did you start or the did fight? Gabrielle? Halle Berry, Olivier Martinez, and her daughter Nala Aubrey arrived at Halle's parents' home in LA to celebrate Thanksgiving following a domestic dispute involving Martinez and Halle's ex, Gabrielle Aubrey. 
Halley was none too pleased with reporters' repeated remarks to get the scoop on the incident, particularly because her daughter was in the car. Be quiet. She has a child here. Policy. She has no damn thing. Just, Be just quiet. Take your picture. Both men were taken to the hospital following a very public fight, and police are still investigating the case. Kirk Douglas put his money in time where his mouth was, literally, when he organized a feeding frenzy for the homeless at the annual LA Mission Thanksgiving dinner event. At his side, Malin Ackerman, Neil Patrick Harris, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, Boo Boo and Fievel Stewart, Miss California, and Bella Thorne. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. If only all of our good deeds were captured like this one. Hi, Rihanna. Welcome back to New York. Even celebrities have to take off their shoes as they enter the security line to get on a flight heading home to see family and loved ones for the holidays. Lindsay, are you worried about going to jail? And Lindsay Lohan dodged all legal questions as she arrived in L.A. Brandy Glanville wore see-through clothing as she disembarked the moving aircraft and said she was a little sleepy to chat about Leanne Rhymes. Welcome back, Leanne. Glee graduate Leah Michelle was a bit under the weather as she returned home to LA, but signed autographs and spoke with fans the whole way out of the airport. Sean Penn was a hair less amused by the cameras waiting for him as he kept his head down following his flight. The K sisters arrived separately at LAX to round out our celebrity roundup Thanksgiving style. You're worried about them. You know that all your fans are worried. Yeah, no, that my fans aren't worried. You're worried. One month after her beau, Justin Bieber, signed on, Selena Gomez has been named a new global style ambassador for Adidas NEO. The singer-actress and on-again girlfriend of one of the world's most famous trendsetters is a designer in her own That's right. Selena and Justin appear to be going Selena, strong Selena again. Pregnant? Justin stayed mum when asked if Selena was pregnant with his child. Come on, Justin, you look cool, the man. reunited young couple had dinner together recently at Benihana in Encino, there California. Listen, I try to be nice. I try to be nice. You're mimicking You're me. You're mimicking me. Okay. Not that. that is rude, Not and this I'm conversation is over. This, this week, we shine the spotlight on the hilariously inappropriate Sarah Silverman. Sarah starred in The School of Rock, There's Something About Mary, and The Bachelor. Her sharp tongue has been instrumental in getting her into back doors in the entertainment industry around the world. She is an actress, writer, and producer, and currently stars in the animated feature film Wreck-It Ralph. I love... Disney movies, I love everything they put out. There's so many familiar faces in there, and even the sugar world of Sugar Rush, where Vanellope lives, there's so many candies that every generation knows and remembers. So there's all this recognition, but it's within a movie that is just so unique and it really hasn't been made before, you know? Sarah was able to interact with her co-star, John C. Riley during the filming of Wreck-It Ralph, an option that isn't usually available on an animated film set. John and I record together a lot, you know, so we were just sitting, you know, we were across from each other like this and we got to play scenes looking in each other's eyes and um, it, overlapping and improvising and it, I think it gave a richness, a more subtlety, you know, some like nuance to our dynamic that you don't necessarily see when everybody's just alone in a booth, you know. Sarah's take on life is always so authentically outrageous, so we wondered how she felt when she saw her animated character on the big screen for the first time. It was so fun. I just saw the movie a couple weeks ago, like from beginning to end, and it's so good and you just love it. And I'm I'm lucky in that I I don't go in my head like, oh, that's me. And you know, at least it's animated, so you're not going like, oh, my hair and my face. It's cool. I mean, I, I love her so much. Stand-up comedy, television, and film are completely different types of medium for anyone to master. And Sarah has appeared to have conquered all three of the art forms. 
We wanted to know if she was more passionate about one form of entertainment over another. No, I really, I love, I've, I've been so lucky to work in so many mediums and, and new mediums, you know, happening in our lifetime that I can take advantage of. And um, I love it all. I don't feel, you know, stand up is great because it's self-contained and it's immediate and I have total control over it, but I just, I miss, it's lonely, you know what I mean? So I, I love the camaraderie of the team sport of, of acting and performing with others. And when we asked her how she felt about all the things she accomplished. What's that? I didn't hear you. Oh yeah, I, I, um, I try to st step outside of it and go like, wow, a little me would be blown away if this is cool, you know? Uh, I wouldn't grab that branch if I were you. I'm from the candy tree department, so I know it's... it's a double strike. <laughs> Box Searchlight will develop a treatment based on the life of singing sensation Susan Boyle. Susan was plucked from relative obscurity when she auditioned for Britain's Got Talent singing the Les Miserables classic tune, I Dreamed a Dream. The title of the film will reflect the song title that made her famous around the world. The film will span Susan's career from working class to popular touring singer. Hallmark Channel will play host to the 2012 Hollywood Christmas Parade. This year's Grand Marshal will be actor Joe Montaigne. Lou Ferrigno and Louis Gossett Jr. will also be on hand. World's Funniest Moments stars Eric Estrada and Laura McKenzie will host. The TNT hit series Dallas will have to adjust upcoming storylines to account for the real-life death of Larry Hagman. Larry's absence will affect upcoming episodes already in the can, and scripts will require rewriting and a possible delay in airing dates. Larry died Friday at age 81 from complications due to cancer. He played bad boy J.R. Ewing for over 35 years. Uh, that was all good. This week's Hollywood Box Office Countdown busted box office records as the highest grossing Thanksgiving weekend in film since 2009. In the number five spot this week, Life of Pi, starring Siraj Sharma, Irfan Khan, and Adil Hussein. Life of Pi earned $22 million. Ah, oh, Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny? The Tooth Fairy! Surprise! And men. You know each other? In the number four spot this week, Rise of the Guardians, starring Hugh Jackman, Isla Fisher, and Alec Baldwin. This animated feature took home $24 million. Ready to do well? Yeah. I love being shoved in a sack and tossed through a magic portal. Oh, good. That was my idea. This fight is for the United States of America. Staying on our countdown in the number three spot, Lincoln. This Spielberg-directed film pulled in $25 million. No one's ever been loved so much by the people. Don't waste that power. 007 remains in spot number two this week with Skyfall. James Bond destroyed the box office at $36 million. One question. Why not stay dead? Every obstacle you face. I think you couldn't overcome it. In our number one spot again this week, the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2. I didn't expect you to seem so... you? Twilight saw 43 million in box office blood this weekend. But I never felt more alive. Hollywood birthdays this week have our celebrities turning anywhere from 20 to 75. Here's our list of not to miss famous birthdays. Laugh-In actress Goldie Hawn turned 67. That girl phenom Marla Thomas turned 75. The Avengers star Scarlett Johansson turned 28. Halloween icon Jamie Lee Curtis turned 54. Hannah Montana's Miley Cyrus turned 20. And Grey's Anatomy star Katherine Heigl turned 34. Be sure to tune in next week for more glitz, glamour, and news from the Hollywood News Feed. This is cool, you know?